Hello everybody. Today I'm talking about how Rahu Ketu in Taurus Scorpio impact your planet. Uh, this is by popular demand. Many of you asked me uh, that I have Saturn in Taurus or I have uh, Moon in Ketu uh, in Scorpio. How is it going to affect and how is it going to affect if Ketu is going over Rahu, Rahu is going over uh, Ketu. So I'm going to uh, talk about it. So this is a special uh, video. Hello, I'm Kumila Sutton and we are talking the planets and Rahu Ketu uh, by special demand. So do remember to uh, subscribe, press the bell notification as you notice that I do read your comments. And if you are looking for something, uh, please do let me know. Then if I can uh, record it, I will try to do that for you. So today is by special demand of many of you because as soon as I posted the uh, Rahu Ketu in uh, Taurus Scorpio uh, video. Uh, so I decided to do this extra one for uh, everybody. So the thing is this, that um, as Rahu goes into Taurus, Ketu goes into Scorpio, they are both exalted and strong and uh, their impact on uh, signs will be video three now. So I will do that later. Uh, but uh, the thing that you have to see is that do you have planets either in Taurus or uh, Scorpio? Then uh, secondly, uh, you know, what houses those planets rule? And uh, then, of course, you are aware that the eclipses are taking place in uh, Taurus, Scorpio. So that means that uh, those houses get impacted by the eclipses as well. When you're uh, watching uh, Rahu Ketu uh, transits, the most important transit is on the ascendant, which I'll talk about it in the next video, uh, but it is on your ascendant ruler as well. So if uh, uh, Ra you don't have Rahu or Ketu in the ascendant, but your ascendant ruler is uh, placed there, then uh, it means that that will also get impacted and there are some uh, changes and transformations in store for you. Uh, secondly, uh, the moon uh, is very key to Rahu Ketu because if your moon uh, is uh, in Taurus or in Scorpio, that means uh, Rahu or Ketu will be going over them. And then also the sun. And of course, there are the eclipses. So uh, when I talk about eclipses later, I will talk about, uh, you know, the degrees of eclipses and everything. So uh, you have to know the exact degree if the your planet is placed and the degree of the eclipses. And accordingly, uh, your uh, uh, planets can get affected. So this uh, video is really about the transit of Rahu or Ketu. So let us uh, first look at Rahu. Uh, uh, normally Rahu transit is uh, usually positive. When Rahu is transiting, uh, he is going to enhance that area. And especially in today's worldliness, you know, Rahu wants things. And if Rahu is transiting over something, he will be desiring things. Whereas Ketu's transit is more difficult to deal with. So wherever Ketu is going over and whatever planets Ketu is going over, you feel like rejecting them, letting them go. You feel uh, greater intensity. Sometimes uh, you reject things, you feel rejected by them. Uh, so in this Rahu Ketu transit, you see that uh, Ketu is more uh, uh, intense uh, by transit. I don't know the degree of your planet. So that is something that you would have to uh, look uh, yourself and, uh, of course, the timing when uh, either Rahu or Ketu is going over it. Uh, so let us explore uh, Rahu first. So Rahu's transit, as I said, it's largely very positive, except the month you could say when Rahu is going over, exactly over the planet in question. And also Rahu is only moving retrograde uh, therefore, it is not going to go over anything more than once. So that is the second important thing. Uh, 
uh, and uh, generally, uh, you know, whichever house Rahu uh, uh, is in and its lord. So the ruler of the planets is very important. Again, that is something I would not be able to uh, tell you what your ruler is. So if you uh, firstly recognize the transit of Rahu in Taurus, Taurus is a fixed sign. So if uh, I'm looking at uh, Rahu transits, all your planets are in fixed signs. And uh, so as Rahu is going over your planets, you don't like change. And Rahu is encouraging change, exploring new things, unexpected transformations as well. So that is something that you have to uh, pay attention to. If your ascendant is in um, uh, um, Taurus, then uh, you are going to be dealing with uh, quite a lot of positive energy because Rahu will give you opportunities. It's exalted there. He's going to raise your profile. He may bring some changes as well because Taurus is a fixed sign. You don't like to change. Uh, so it may be bringing you some changes. Uh, and uh, you have to see where Venus is placed for you. Uh, and then that will give you a clearer indication. Uh, sun, uh, if Sun is in Taurus, then uh, Rahu will be going over the sun. The exact uh, transit of Rahu on the sun, as well as because the eclipses are in Taurus, there is going to be a definite change. You now, sun in Taurus, sun is also a fixed energy and Rahu is fixed and therefore uh, it can uh, bring uh, some uh, uncertainty because you don't want to change, you don't want to be flexible and Rahu's change because eclipses are taking place in Taurus, right? Uh, even if it's not exactly conjoined your sun, it's close to your sun. And so uh, therefore there is some transformation change things you can't plan for, uh, but you can be aware that this is a time for change and that you are open to that uh, situation. Moon, Moon in Taurus, Moon is exalted in Taurus. It's very strong, powerful, uh, but when Rahu goes, Rahu is a great enemy of the Moon. Uh, so he can obscure your thinking. He can make you worried, unnecessarily worried at this time. Now, what is important to understand is that the entire transit of Rahu in uh, Taurus is not going to affect you fully. It will be when it is almost exact on the moon. So that is the time that you have to be uh, careful and not make any decisions. And if you feel very unsettled, uh, then uh, you can uh, do something about at that time or try to be settled. And uh, definitely at the exact uh, transit of Rahu over your moon, you should not be making any major decisions. And uh, usually it is best to react to situations and even those situations to be uh, careful about. Mars, uh, Mars uh, in Taurus, uh, and if uh, uh, Rahu is going over Mars in Taurus, again, the same rules apply. It is the exact transit you're looking for. If Mars is close to uh, any eclipse, so that is an aspect. And of course, what houses does uh, uh, Mars rule? Uh, in the case of sun and moon, it is not that important because they are identities in themselves. So uh, that is important uh, to note. Uh, so um, uh, sun is your soul, moon is the mind, sun is your identity, uh, moon is your emotions. Whereas Mars is particular rulers of the houses and those areas uh, with Rahu's uh, transit uh, will uh, make some changes and uh, uh, unexpected and Rahu can uh, aggravate your energy and where, while Rahu is going exactly over your Mars, you need to be uh, watchful for uh, your anger issues or bitterness or just getting irritated and frustrated. And of course, Mars is a significator for brothers and siblings, brothers and sisters. So there can be some issue that can come up with them uh, and that you will need to deal with. Mercury uh, is, uh, again, you have to look at what houses Mercury rules. Uh, Mercury is significator for the intellect and mind. 
and Rahu is a shadow. So when he crosses over Mercury in Taurus, then he can create some shadows, some uh, unusual type of thinking. And uh, normally, as I said, that throughout Taurus, it wouldn't be every day that Rahu affects. So we are watching very uh, close transits when Rahu is going over Mercury. And uh, therefore, uh, this can be um, a time that your thinking is uh, uh, worried. You can feel dissatisfied. One of the aspects of Rahu is it brings a lot of dissatisfaction. And our job is to try to uh, calm that down because Rahu will uh, suddenly th make us feel very dissatisfied. And the shadowy nature means that we are afraid for the future, we are worried, we are unnecessarily overthinking the problem. Again, remember it's when it's exact, it's about uh, one month that particular transit will you will feel the intensity. Uh, whereas Rahu Ketu are 18 months in Taurus. So uh, at Scorpio. So Rahu's, uh, that aspect is there. Uh, Jupiter, Jupiter, if you have Jupiter and Taurus, again, look at the house rulers of Jupiter. And Jupiter is the guru. And you could say Rahu is the anti-guru. Rahu is interested in international things, different things, outsider. He's not follower of tradition. So if Rahu is going over your Jupiter, it can be quite exciting for you. You might suddenly start thinking about, uh, you know, doing something different. You're thinking in a different way. Uh, but on the more cautious side, you have to be careful that you are not uh, thinking in a totally negative thinking because Guru uh, Jupiter is more pure and Rahu brings an impure element into it. And again, it is the exact transit that you're looking at, not the whole transit. So if you have Jupiter in Taurus, uh, Venus in uh, Taurus, Venus is the Lord of Taurus. So uh, Taurus will be ruling some house in your chart. If it is your ascendant ruler or other houses ruler, uh, Venus is in full dignity in Taurus. Venus is the guru of Rahu as Shukracharya. Venus is Karaka for marriage and wife. Uh, so generally for both uh, sexes, you would feel that uh, some issues regarding relationships can uh, come up during this transit of uh, Venus in Taurus. Whereas you can also see that uh, there is, a, you know, a wife in, uh, can feel dissatisfied, unhappy. So as uh, Rahu is going exact degrees over your Venus, that is the time to watch out for. Once he finishes the transit of Venus, then the issues will become more clear and easy to know. And of course, it is very important to see where the eclipses are happening, what degrees. I will make a separate video as we come to the eclipses about uh, eclipses in Taurus. And therefore, you need to be uh, aware of that. But definitely Rahu can uh, disturb uh, the relationship area of your life if you have Venus in Taurus. And it can also um, uh, make you doubt uh, whether you want to be in a relationship or not, or create some doubts, unnecessary doubts. And uh, you have to see, uh, you know, if the eclipses are affecting as well. Uh, Saturn, now Saturn in Taurus usually is quite good, Saturn in Taurus, but it's a malefic planet and um, Rahu's transit over it is also, Rahu is also a malefic planet. So what happens is that uh, when Rahu is transiting over Saturn, it can uh, throw up some obstacles. You see, Rahu is uh, trying to find answers to this life. Saturn is very interested in doing their karma to face up to the issues. Whereas Rahu can, um, you know, suddenly bring some obstacle there right at the exact transit. Of course, Saturn can be a very good planet uh, for you. He can be a Raja Yoga or a strong planet for you. Uh, but even then, that exact transit of Rahu over Saturn is to be uh, careful about. And then finally, when Rahu is going over Rahu, that means that you have Rahu in um, 
Taurus and you've got a good Rahu and Rahu over Rahu is a good transit. It's like 18 years have gone by for you and you are resetting your um, energy and there may be some uh, unexpected aspect. I am not sure that you'll feel anything on the exact transit, but it's more like an 18 year cycle is over for you and you are uh, working with that. Now, Rahu um, uh, going over Ketu, that means if Ketu is in Taurus. Uh, so what happens is that Rahu gets very interested in past life and, uh, you know, old issues and he can generate, even think about past in this life that Rahu can create some expenses going over Ketu. He can generate some issue uh, that uh, is uh, old uh, from earlier on in this life. And is that positive, negative is more difficult to judge. Actually, you have to think of it is that uh, Rahu going over Ketu can light a spark, but it's not always that it lights a spark. So that is a uh, factor that we don't know. When uh, Rahu is going over Ketu, it means that 18 years have passed and it depends whether uh, something has got sparked by Rahu and Ketu. So it can uh, suddenly bring a big event to life as well. But that is very hard to judge just looking at without looking at uh, the particular chart. And finally, you have to see in Rahu transit says that is there going to be um, multiple planets in Taurus? So if you have multiple planets in Taurus, uh, then you have to think that this is a major transit for you because uh, there are uh, big changes because Rahu is going to touch each one of the planets, even two planets, three, four, depending on what you have. Uh, so uh, depending on the intensity, uh, then uh, there can be some uh, unexpected changes and many changes in different areas of your life because each planet rules a different uh, sign and then it is a karaka or significator for different energies. So now let us look at Ketu's transit. So Ketu is in Scorpio. It's again exalted. Uh, Ketu starts off this energy in Gandanta. And uh, so he is really shaking up the situation. Even though he's strong, it is powerful. So if you have planets, Lagna in uh, the Scorpio or all the other planets, that means that um, there are going to be some changes, transformation. Normally, you know, when uh, Ketu is transiting, you'll feel Ketu more than Rahu. Uh, and in the next uh, video, I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, opposition, Rahu, Ketu, and the houses and signs it goes through. Uh, so uh, Ketu in um, going over your planet. So of course, uh, sun, uh, it is your identity, your ego. If you have sun in Scorpio, uh, there will be a big transformation. And Ketu is more hurtful, more complex. Rahu is uh, giving you excitement and, uh, you know, energy. Whereas Ketu makes you feel rejected and very headless. I remember when I was having a Ketu transit, I was not <laughs> making any sense of things because I was feeling very flaky. And it's great if you have, uh, Ketu uh, planets in Scorpio that to do some study of Jyotish because that is the best uh, aspect or you can study yoga, Vedanta, those things because uh, Ketu is very spiritual. So uh, think about that. So if it is going over your son, uh, it, it could be some issue with father, uh, power, government, uh, identity crisis. Those are the things. Again, you have to watch the precise transit, exact degrees. A month is the most intense transit and also the eclipses in Ketu. Uh, the next uh, Ketu eclipse is on 28 degrees of uh, Scorpio and it is in uh, 14th of December. But I'll do a separate aspect of eclipses. But if eclipses are affecting you and you have planet right there, then you know that there are going to be some changes. So uh, uh, be prepared for it. And uh, then we go to um, moon, moon in Scorpio. Now moon in Scorpio is the debilitated sign of the moon. You can be very intense. 
very spiritual, very transformative personality. Uh, but uh, you don't like change. You need to learn how to flow with the energy. And Ketu's transit over your moon can bring issues regarding mother, uh, your own emotions, your thinking, uh, and it can be quite disruptive for you. Uh, and to be, uh, again, uh, that one month when Ketu is going over your planets and then the eclipse times, I would say there are going to be uh, three solar eclipses in um, this uh, transit, but only two in Scorpio. So to watch out for those. And I will be making a separate video on that. Uh, Mars. Uh, Mars acts like Ketu uh, and uh, Mars is like a double Ketu. If you have Mars in Scorpio, that's a powerful Mars. Yet Ketu is more powerful than Mars. Uh, going over uh, Mars, it can affect your relationship with your siblings, brothers and sisters. It can be uh, egg you on, make you angry, more frustrated. You have to be very careful when Ketu is transiting exactly over Mars because uh, you are powerful personality and uh, Ketu can, um, you know, make it more fiery. Uh, so that is where you need to be uh, very conscious, exact transit uh, of uh, Ketu over Mars. Mm. Mercury, Mercury in Scorpio. Mercury is the thinking planet. It's quite intense in Scorpio, not the best position for Mercury to be in. But you know, Scorpio is very transformative, very uh, uh, secretive. It's got a lot of uh, deep secret knowledge. So Ketu going over Mercury is definitely a time when you're not thinking carefully. And uh, so, uh, you know, the exact transit when it's taking place and the two uh, Ketu eclipses, they are going to be in December uh, and late November, the eclipses. So uh, you are to watch out for them. And also during that time of the exact Ketu transit, uh, you know, try not to make important decisions and uh, know that you're not totally um, aware what is happening at that time. Uh, Ketu transiting over uh, Jupiter. So uh, Jupiter and Scorpio, he likes being there. He's strong, powerful. And uh, Ketu is uh, going over Jupiter can actually also wake you up to studying something more spiritual. But you can also reject the knowledge and wisdom and tradition. Uh, and you think, oh, that is no good. But what is it there for me? And those are things to watch out for because, the, the you know, your wisdom that Jupiter represents and Jupiter is also children. Uh, Jupiter is significant for wealth, uh, children, uh, elder brother, uh, guru. Uh, so it has all the positive uh, second, fifth, uh, uh, ninth, eleventh house. So you've got to be careful uh, that you are not acting against those people. And maybe uh, you may have some unexpected issue with your children, creativity, fifth house uh, as well. Uh, Ketu going over Venus. Venus is Karaka for uh, relationships. Venus is not at its best position in Scorpio. Uh, it is uncomfortable there. And then Ketu coming there and uh, bringing some kind of aggression to relationships, secret because it's hidden and not so open. And also uh, Ketu uh, being a complex transit uh, over Venus. Uh, so not the easiest time for you uh, regarding the houses uh, Venus rules also as the significator of uh, marriage as well as wife in your chart. So it, rather than reject you love and respect and especially at the exact conjunction to be very cautious and careful. And when the issues come up, then react to them, but react with wisdom, not just, uh, you know, headless, be conscious of that. Now, Ketu going over Saturn. Again, Saturn is a malefic planet and Saturn is not so comfortable naturally in um, Scorpio and uh, Ketu going over Saturn. Uh, he can certainly um, take your focus away from your work. He can also make you feel, uh, you know, that uh, giving up all your work and career and everything. But at the same time, depending on the houses, Saturn rules, it affects that house as well. 
But the Ketu transiting over Saturn is not the easiest energy, but also to remember that that is going to be very precise, uh, not the whole transit. You see, uh, uh, when it goes into the sign, it, does, it is in the sign. So you say that you are anticipating it, uh, but it is not exactly on uh, the planet. So uh, we have to wait till it comes on the planet. And that is when the impact is there. Uh, and then uh, Ketu going over Rahu. Again, if uh, Ketu going over Rahu, it means nine years have passed. It can spark something great because Rahu is looking for the future. But remember that Rahu is not comfortable in Scorpio. And uh, Scorpio is a very unusual, intense, very um, uh, inspirational sign, but it also has a lot of complexity. So uh, if Ketu triggers the wrong side of Rahu, it can encourage you to go in a different direction that is not always productive for you. So we, that transit is something to be careful about. Now, if um, Ketu is going over Ketu, means you have exalted Ketu in your chart, is a great time uh, to start some study, study uh, astrology, Jyotish especially because it has roots in the uh, Vedanta and you can do Vedanta, uh, yoga, other spiritual aspirations as well. Uh, and um, of course, if you have many planets in Scorpio, then Ketu's transit means it is uh, bothering each of the planets separately. So, you know, that means normally, you know, when I see uh, three or more planets in a sign and a major transit is taking place, then I would say that the next 18 months are uh, one to uh, watch out for and be careful. And even though Ketu is powerful and strong, when he goes exactly over your planets, he's also headless. He's also, uh, you know, can be very uh, negative. So uh, watching that is important too. Uh, now you can think about these uh, Rahu Ketu going through uh, Taurus, uh, Scorpio. They are powerful, uh, expressing change yet, uh, both are fixed signs, so they are not always uh, encouraging uh, you to change. So it's sort of an opposite aspect that they want change, yet the fixed nature uh, makes you try to go around the circle in the same area. Uh, and I will feel that you can uh, do some remedies if you are having the um, uh, difficult transits. Uh, so the best remedy to do uh, is for Rahu Ketu, not for the planets, because the planets themselves are being bothered by Rahu Ketu. And whatever it is, Rahu Ketu are, um, you know, agents of change and they are karmic planets. So some things we can't control over. So uh, we need so doing remedy for Rahu Ketu, uh, it is important to do the remedy for Rahu Ketu, not for the planets that are going under Rahu Ketu, because they are the forces, they are karmic forces. And by karmic, I mean that sometimes we have to face their uh, results. So what we want is that uh, we don't want uh, them to be coming at us at full force. Just little gently they come and they deliver their message and go away. Uh, so therefore doing the remedy for Rahu Ketu is most important. So we can do the remedy for them for uh, the deities of Rahu Ketu. For uh, Rahu, the uh, deity is Goddess Durga. And Goddess Durga, we are also coming into Navaratri. Uh, so you may consider doing something for Navaratri, uh, which is uh, uh, 16th of October to 25th of October. That is a festival for the nine nights of Goddess Festival. Now, you may just uh, do a regular uh, worship of Goddess Durga. Uh, and for Ketu, the deity is Lord Ganesha. So um, you can uh, do the worship for Lord Ganesha. Then uh, for both Rahu Ketu, uh, giving donation is a good idea. Actually, just now is also Adhika Masa. So you can give donation uh, to uh, for Rahu is outsiders, uh, people, uh, immigrants, people who are, uh, you know, workers, 
uh, Ketu, you can do donation for mendicant, spiritual people, ashrams, places like that. Uh, you can also donate food, medicine, uh, looking after other people. So any kind of donation that you feel appropriate. And then also for uh, Rahu is to, um, you know, a little bit control the dissatisfaction and try to give the love instead, contentment, you know, opposite of that I'm contented, I'm okay where I am, and I'm happy to deal with that. And for Ketu, the best, uh, best remedy is uh, to study <clears throat> Jyotish, uh, Vedic astrology, to study yoga, Vedanta, spiritual practices. You know, I started my study of Jyotish when Ketu was very prominent and uh, it has been wonderful discovery for so many years. And uh, uh, so uh, that would be a great remedy to do. So do uh, remember to subscribe and also the next uh, video of this Rahu Ketu is Rahu Ketu in the different signs. So how it affects you and do leave comments and uh, as a, you know that I'm reading them and this video is specially uh, because you asked for it. Thank you.